uh, Leafkenway has a question. How do I clear sediment from a nib? I have a pen I flushed many times, but it still has flow issues. Mm. All right. Well, mm. Leaf Kenway, I believe, is your Leaf? Name. What did I say? Life? Leaf? Le- Leaf Kenway. Leaf, Leaf, Ken- Leaf Kenway. Okay. Let's go with that. Cool. Um, okay. So if repeated flushing doesn't work, I'm assuming you've tried something other than water, like pen flush, uh, you'll probably need to disassemble. That's when you take your nib and your feed out and clean them individually and then put them back in. Um, If you've never disassembled your nib and feed before, check online for resources depending on which pen you have. If you've got a pen like a Custom 823, removing the nib and feed from that will void your warranty. And you could essentially be um, really limiting your post-sale support options. And we would not want to recommend that for you, especially if you're having a hard time you might want to uh, figure that out first. So it really depends heavily on your pen. Like if you've got a Pilot Metropolitan, those can, you can remove the nib and feed on that super easily. And then 823, like I said, very, very, very different. So there's not gonna be one answer that's going to apply to all of these scenarios. Um, But we do have a bunch of videos focused on cleaning pens. So I will include those either up top here or down below in the description. So check those out if you are curious about those, or you can just, search cleaning on our channel and a bunch will come up. Um, So most nibs and feeds can be pulled out. They're friction fit nibs. You can just grub them with your thumb and forefinger as far back as possible away from the nib and just yank them out safely at a very straight distance. You don't want to kind of like hold them here and pull them out like that because Mm. then you could, you know, end up snapping the post off of your back of your feed. You always want to pull them straight out, yeah. no angles. Um, and uh, once that's disassembled, then you can just give them a good cleaning. It doesn't take a whole lot else. Even a nib that's been sitting with junk in it for years, really some some warm water and some pen flush and, uh, you know, a paper towel or a cotton swab can generally get everything done. For the feed, however, a toothbrush is the way to go. Maybe uh, hey, Drule uh, pen cleaning I'd, toothbrush. I'm just saying an official Drule pen company plain cleaning <laughs> toothbrush that doesn't exist might be just what you need. <laughs> Not to be confused with old toothbrush you already might have laying around. It's the it's if it's a, if it you can pretend it's a Drule toothbrush. It'll it'll work better if you do, <laughs> guaranteed. Fair um, enough. Fair enough. So yeah, um, <clears throat> once that's done, give it a good scrub and get in the nooks and the crannies of that feed Mm. and dislodge any ink you could also soak it for a little while you know in just some warm water with a little bit of pin flush that works too and uh if you want to you can always especially if it's actually not only if it's a pen we sell at the goulet pen company you can shoot an email to us over at our customer care department at info at um we're always happy to help you clean your pens and figure out how to maintain them um but remind you that very clearly as an evidence from our last conversation our knowledge is very limited to what we sell and what we have sold in the uh in the store so we have I mean, a lot of it but it but it has be, we'll it has be honest with you about where the boundaries are of what we know yes yes but yeah we can never have a hundred percent confidence if we have no experience with said yes before yes 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 yeah really where we run into issues is where we are not pen restorers or like a vintage or antique pen like repair experts. So when you get into like old bladder filling mechanisms and stuff like that, it's like uh, there could be things disassembling that it's like there could be shellac that is holding parts together. And a lot of new variables get introduced. Yeah, so I would say you have to use your judgment. If it's a really old pen, like decades old, there may be some other things to consider and then you would want to consult Especially if it's a pen that you just like picked up at a whatever flea market and you don't really care and you just want to try it, go nuts. But if it's something that's like handed down through your family and it's can never be replaced kind of a thing, I would reach out to somebody that does some actual pen restoration and consult with them before you go just ripping your pen apart. Because, you know, these days there aren't too many pens that you're going to cause a lot of problems with disassembling and usually when they don't want you to do that they'll they'll say not to do certain things um but when you get into some older pens there's some specific techniques you know there used to be a lot more pen repair people i'm talking like 50s 1940s 50s 60s that kind of thing there used to be like trained pen repair professionals around the the u.s and around the world um these days mm, they're very few and far between so uh you know there used to be a lot more parts available there used to be a lot more people that kind of knew how to do these things. 
Nowadays, eh, it's a little more specialized. So, you know, kind of use, use your own discretion there. Um, but yeah, I would say like the soaking thing for like for me personally, if it's like dried ink that's in the pen as a person who has historically waited way too long to clean certain pens, you know, I will try to take pens apart, but it usually benefits to do a little bit of soaking first because, you know, some of the sediment, which could be a number of different things, but usually it's dried up old crusty ink in there. If you let it soak, if you can actually get liquid in there, like water, pen flush, whatever it may be, if you can get it in there and it can, it just it making contact with that old dried ink will help to break it down and will make disassembly easier. It will be less likely that you'll damage parts and stuff like that. If you have, you know, some of these fins on some of these feeds and stuff like that can be, you know, bent or broken kind of easily. If you have old dried up ink in there, it almost kind of acts like glue and it can make it where you're more likely to damage your pen. So I would just say, try that, maybe try the soaking thing if you know that it's a dried up ink issue, not just a flow issue, but um, you know that could be holding your parts together and, and cause your risk of damage higher if you just go tearing into the thing. Uh, also ultrasonic cleaner. I'm not sure if you mentioned that. That's another possibility. No, because he, he's really was just saying like, you know, uh, how do I clear it off? He never really. Um, yeah, he says he flushed it many times, but it has yeah, flow issues. I think they, so yeah, it's, you're gonna it's, need to disassemble it and clean it. Probably. Yeah. More than likely, but yeah. if you can't disassemble it, I mean, what happens sometimes, so the reason I mention that is because what happens sometimes, people get a pen from, you know, used from a pen show or something like that, or they have a pen that they had in a drawer 10 years ago. They clean it, they flush it, it still functions, but there's old junk still in there that's impeding the flow. It's not blocking the flow, but it is impeding it. It does need to be more thoroughly cleaned. That's where a soaking or an ultrasonic cleaner could help you because it will more thoroughly clean it. So again, I think like what Drew said, disassemble if you can or soak, fl you know, flush, all that kind of stuff. And that could help. There you all go. Right. Well, all right, we've got- Use a wetter ink. <laughs> if yes, 